My name is Jessica Melita and I'm Assistant Director in Career Services and I specifically work with the students in the College of Engineering and Computing and the STEM majors in the College of Arts and Science. If you aren't one of those majors, you can feel free to come up after the presentation and I can let you know who your specific career advisor would be. The reason we do that in our office is because we're specifically catering towards the different majors that we work with and then those employers and those graduate schools. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about salary negotiation tools and techniques and we're going to have a lively discussion hopefully about if you all have had to negotiate salary before for an internship or maybe a job that you had in the past or if you've heard about other ideas about how to negotiate, what some of your fears are, and then actually some different techniques to negotiate salary. So to kind of start out, we typically suggest in career services that you don't try to bring up salary negotiation until the employer does. Does anyone have an idea of why we would suggest to do that? Any thoughts? Yes? So it seems like you're all about the money? Yeah, so he said, so it doesn't seem like you're all about the money. If you go in in a first round interview and say, hey, I'm really great at this, you should hire me, and these are my salary requirements, they might get a little offended because they might have two or three other interviews after that and you might not be one of their final candidates. So they might be really concerned that, you know, we're not even sure if this person's a good fit for our organization and they're already talking to us about money. Um, so has anyone ever looked online, maybe for an internship or a job, and you actually saw that it asked you for what your salary requirements were? Has anyone seen that before? Yeah. So what did anyone do in that situation? Yep. Mm -hmm. I uh, just looked up through the supply chain major, so others in the supply chain magazine, and they give out like an annual salary thing across the nation in different categories for supply chain. So I just looked Correct. that up. Perfect. Put entry level. And put entry level, that kind of. Did you put a range or did you put a number? Yeah, no, that's really good. So she had said that she's a supply chain major, so she had access to a different newsletter that talked about different supply chain majors and what they were making in different parts of the country. So that's exactly what you want to do. You don't just want to go in there and say, this is a requirement on the HR application, I have to fill that out, and then just put a number, because you don't want to put a number that's too low for the requirements that you might have and the skills that you might need, but if you put something that's too high, they might say, okay, the student just asked for $50,000 and we're not paying our entry level students $50,000, we're paying someone maybe with five or six years experience $50,000. So doing that research beforehand is really good. At the end of the presentation, there's different links in the presentation that talk about some of those different websites that are very generalized, but then also on our career services website, there's specific newsletters that you can link to to learn about that salary negotiation. So when I asked if she had done a range why do you think a range might be a good idea as opposed to a number? Any ideas? Or has anyone put a range before? So you can negotiate. Yeah. Perfect. So you can negotiate. Because again, if she put $32,000, but they you know, were accustomed to paying their employees thirty two to thirty five, dollars they might say, great. She said she's open to $32,000, and that's what we're going to pay her. But if she put that range, she has a little bit more ability for them to say, OK, based on her skills that we can see from her resume, from her interviewing, what we know about her from maybe an internship she had here or a job shadow, we might start her off as a little bit more. So that's something that we kind of talk about early on, that the time to negotiate your salary is once you've been offered that position. Because at that point in time, that's when that employer wants you. And then you have some of the power in your hands, whereas before, you're still interviewing, you're still getting to know them, and seeing if it's a good fit for you. So telling people that it's always a good idea to consider negotiating. Um, just to consider it, because sometimes you might say, they offer me my dream job in my dream state, in my dream city, and they gave me $5,000 more than I thought they were going to give me, and they gave me 10 more vacation days than I thought. I'm good to go. You know, I don't need anything else in that you know, salary negotiation. I'm good. So with that one, sometimes it's not a requirement. If you say they gave me a lot more than I expected or maybe I see on their website or I know from their other entry level employees that they don't actually negotiate salary. Sometimes large companies, especially investment banks, um, some of the different recruiting firms might hire in 20 to 30 entry level employees right from college and they might say your starting salary is this and that's non-negotiable. 
just because they have so many people that they're bringing in that they can't negotiate $5,000 here, $500 there, two vacation days here. They kind of have their set expectations for their organization and what they can pay out. But some of those companies that you can get involved in that bring in you into a training program, you'll move up really quickly in two or three years and then you will start to receive bonuses. So if that's something that you know, hey, this is a good fit for me, I know I have a lot of ability to move up, I have ability to manage other people right away, do what I like, sometimes just knowing straight out that you can't negotiate is good for you so you're not embarrassing yourself by saying, oh, I want to negotiate, and they said, it's clearly on our website or in the job description that we don't negotiate this specific job salary. So definitely doing that research. Um, so you must have business reasons to negotiate. So business reasons include things such as, I have certain skills, or I had done an internship that related to this area, or I have three years of volunteer experience with this organization, so I already know a lot of what you want me to know about, so you don't need to train me with this. Or maybe I already have a certification that you want me to have, you don't have to spend $1,000 to send me to that conference, because I already know this information. So business reasons about your skills, your abilities, your experiences to negotiate. So again, after you get that job offer, you might know what they really like about you. Hopefully during that interview process, they've been telling you, oh, we're really excited about this class that you had, or we're really excited that you know how to use this piece of equipment, or that you have this experience with customers. So keep track of that. When you're interviewing for different jobs, things that they notice about you, that they point out, that they say, this is what we're really excited about, or this is really unique about you, keep track of that. Because if you start to learn about who else they're hiring or what kind of their minimum requirements are, if you have above those requirements, then that could be a reason to negotiate. So you don't want to go in there and say, well, I'm going to need more money because I'm going to be driving an hour to work. Or I'm going to need more money because I have a lot of student loans to pay off. You know, everyone kind of has personal reasons for their own budget of why they would want to make more money or have more incentives to apply for different jobs. But that's not really the reason to negotiate and you want to go into that conversation really focused on your value to that employer as an employee. Eventually, you know, you'll start talking to them about your personal life, other things that you're involved with, but that's not really a good reason to negotiate. So kind of thinking about that. Um, so again, I talked about that they want you. And then finally, don't go into a negotiation. If you get a job offer and you had done that whole interview process and you know that you had another offer that you were this close to accepting, you know, you got an offer maybe the same day or a week before and you were about ready to offer that, but then another company came in and said, we really liked you, we're going to offer you the position. Don't go to that second company that had offered you second and said, well, I'll take it if you give me this much money. Because if they offer you that much money and then you don't take it, that's going to look really bad on you. That you're just trying to negotiate for a reason that you're actually not going to accept. Does everyone kind of get why that would look bad? Cool. So we talked about that. Um, so again, realistically, looking at those different websites. So going in and seeing, well, what is an entry-level employee actually making in this field? If I go on to graduate school right after I get uh, my undergraduate degree, I'm going to be making potentially a little bit more than someone that started out in this opportunity right when they came out of undergrad. So those different websites, um, a couple that I'll list at the end, that you'll see payscale.com, glassdoor.com, salary.com. A lot of them, if you Google them, they kind of up right away because there's so many hits on those things. Because everyone is doing a lot of research to say, well, what is going to be an appropriate amount that I should be asking for? So again, having that research that so you can see, if you're going to be working in New York City, you potentially might be making five or $10,000 more than somebody in Oxford, Ohio in the same job just because the standard of living, the cost to live in New York City, is a little bit higher than it is to live here in Oxford, Ohio. But that's something to really consider about yourself. You know, even if the salary looks really high, I need to do some research about myself. You know, if I live in New York, am I going to be able to have a car? Am I going to have to take the subway every day? Am I going to have to pay maybe $800 more for my apartment than I would pay in Oxford, Ohio? Some of those things that you think, oh, this might cost the same amount of money, certain places are vastly different. So you can look at what those just different geographical costs are and really see, based on your own budget, how much money you might have for your cell phone payment, your rent, renter's insurance, student loans, and really start to determine, I see what the entry level position is for 
my industry, this is how much money that I really would hope to get. And aim high. You know, if it's something that you see someone's making $42,000 as an entry level employee in Dayton, Ohio, that's kind of the average. And I have some of those skills that meet up with the entry level employees or even more. Maybe I'm going to ask for a little bit more. So they can try to negotiate oh, that salary a lot. Um, typically, companies don't pull offers. So that's when we talk about it is, it is somewhat risky to go back to an employer and say, I'm really excited about this opportunity. I really want it, but I'm looking for more money. And then they might come back to you and say, OK, well, how much money are you looking for? You don't want to just throw out a number. You want to throw out the range, because again, then they can kind of see what your expectations are. But then also citing those resources, saying, I went on salary.com and I saw for an entry level employee with a bachelor's degree, this is what they're making and this is where I got that data from. So you're not just throwing that number out there. They could come back and say, you know what, we can't meet that demand. We've got a couple other employees that we're hiring or we're making some cutbacks. This is the amount that we can pay you. And if you can't accept that, then we can't offer you the position. Again, typically companies don't do that. More often what I've seen when I'm talking to students is that they are apologetic that they can't offer students more, especially if it's a realistic expectation. But there's going to be some ways that we can talk about what other things you can negotiate besides salary. So we'll talk about those. Um, so we talked about those. Do, do, do. So, again, yep. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying if you go in and you have a range, you can say where you got that range. Like, I found this range with salary.com. Definitely. No, because those are people. So what salary.com actually shows is people that are actually employed in those positions, they actually put in that data that says, I'm a career counselor at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and I make this much money. So it's actual people saying that, or it's actual, so what happens in career services across the country, we have a professional organization, just as you all have professional organizations for your majors, that actually collect that data. So when we say, okay, someone just got a position at Deloitte, this salary kind of calculator actually knows what different students are making from their different experiences. So it's legitimate data. So if you kind of say where you got that from, that's just a good way that they know that you've done the research. Not always. So what if it's a big company or it's a small company? Sometimes you can actually look it up by a title. So if you said, I'm a account manager in Denver, Colorado, there could be several different companies that have account managers in Denver, Colorado. So it's still the average of that city. So sometimes you can see the actual company. Other times you can see the city. So you can kind of look it up that way, too. Cool. Other questions based off that right now? Cool. Good question. Cool. Um, so we kind of started talking about salary negotiation, but other things to start to consider are, you know, things that aren't related to salary. Sometimes that's really hard to think of. Well, what else am I going to need besides salary, or what's going to be important to me? Um, but thinking about the location. If it's something that you know that that location is close to family or friends or a new city that you just want to try out. Some companies might not have their headquarters in a certain city, but they might have a new branch opening up or a place that they only send their top candidates to because it's a new place that they really want to send really skilled applicants to. So being able to potentially negotiate what location you would go to could be really important. Um, also thinking of opportunities for advancement. So I talked about that earlier that some companies right away will tell you this is where you're starting out. But within the first year, you could be at this level if you meet these different outcomes. Maybe within three years, you can be at this level if you meet these different outcomes. And a lot of times when you get promoted, you get a different title, you get a different salary range, and you get some other incentives such as trying things that you want to have the opportunity to do more. So thinking about those things. Also, flexibility of schedule. So a lot of times um, you think, oh yeah, 8 AM is really early in college, right? But in the real world, um, a lot of people work 8 to 5 or later. But if you know, hey, I've got some other obligations. Maybe I do live far from work. Or maybe I really want to go to the gym in the morning, and my employer is going to let me work from 9 to 7. Or they're going to give me you know, time to work 
even later in the evening or flex time. You know, if I know that I have a dinner meeting that went till 8 p.m. at night, I don't necessarily have to come into the job the next morning at 10 a.m. until 10 a.m. Not all employers do that. Some employers say, that's fine that you had that meeting till 8 o'clock at night, but we need you here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. just like everybody else because we want people to see that you're here, you're working. So some of that flexibility of schedule is really important to kind of consider what would be the best fit for you. Um, also the culture of the organization. Um, some of the organizations that recruit here at Miami, they have business casual dress. Other ones have really casual dress. Like, you can wear gym shorts to work. Some people love that. They're like, awesome, I would love to wear gym shorts to work. I would love to be in a more laid back environment. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe I'm not making quite as much money as I thought I would be making, but I know that I can be in a place that I enjoy, really connect with my coworkers, socialize with them at work, after work, and that's something that's important to me rather than making a few thousand dollars more. So really start to consider what could be important to you and jobs that you've liked in the past, what you liked about them, and kind of start to investigate that in your internships or your jobs. Also, travel ability. Um, so the ability that some companies will pay for different travel expenses to go to conferences or to go to different work events. There's some companies that if you work throughout the week, as long as you're back you know, at work on Monday, they don't care where you fly to in between that Friday and Sunday. They'll pay for that and then just pay for you to get back to work. So that's really nice because you can be like, oh, you know, I was out in San Francisco and then I want to fly up to Seattle and then go back to work on Monday. So that's something that you could start to save a lot of money if you say, hey, this is a really great time that I can explore and start to visit with friends or family that are a little bit farther away. Vacation time is another one. Um, some of the larger companies definitely have more strict rules on vacation. They might say, as you start out with vacation, you're gonna receive one day per month, and maybe that doesn't start out till you've already worked for us for six months. Sometimes they kind of wait to make sure that you're an employee, that you're kind of there, you're committed, you're a good worker, until they start to give you that vacation. Other companies say right away, you're gonna get 1.8 days every month, and you can use that any time that you want. Um, some companies actually make you use vacation up. If you got 12 days in that year, if you don't use those 12 days, then you lose it before you can even get other vacation days. So a lot of times you can find out information about that either during the interview, they'll start to talk to you about the contract, what your contract actually entails, your salary, your vacation, your different benefits. But a lot of times if you're not sure and they're not talking to you about it during an interview, you can go on our human resources website. And that's really the best way that you can always talk to human resources and say, you know, I'm really curious about what type of retirement benefits that I would get what ability do you have to match different benefits? Can you tell me more about that? Rather than potentially talking to your boss about, hey, I got a lot of student loans to pay back. I really need to know how much money I'm being able to contribute to retirement or how much money I can negotiate for. So those are things to consider. Um, so the data we talked about, so financial things. So planning is key. So knowing your deal breakers. So I talk about that you know, we say that you want a certain type of salary, but if you start to look at how much money am I going to be spending on clothing a month? How much money do I really anticipate that I'm going to be spending on food a month? And sometimes if you've lived off campus, that's really easy to kind of tell, hey, on average, I've spent this much money a month on food. I know how much cable costs. I know how much my phone costs. If you haven't lived off campus, some things might surprise you. Um, renter's insurance. Does anyone have renter's insurance? Yes. Cool. So everyone should have renter's insurance. Um, it's something that people don't think about a lot to incorporate that into your budget. So insurance is one of those things, you know, your car, your phone, um, your renter's insurance, your apartment's insurance. When you need it, it's really important to have it because it could cost you a lot of money. Let's say there's a flood in your apartment and then you have to replace all your professional clothes that you just bought. That adds up pretty fast, those things. So that's something that it's not that much money each month to pay into, but it's something that you want to start to think about that when you're not a student, it could be something to consider. Um, so be prepared to listen and respond during the salary negotiation. So I talked about that you're not going to start to negotiate that salary until you get the job offer. So what will typically happen is that they say, we're going to offer you this job, so they give you the title, this amount of money, and your start date is this time. So those are important things to find out. If you don't know those three things, you definitely want to get that in writing. 
And then from there, that's your opportunity to start to think of, is this the title that I expected to have? Oftentimes you know that you applied for that position, so that's okay. Um, is this the salary that we had talked about or I had read about online? Is this a lot more than I thought it was going to be? Is this a lot less than I thought it was going to be? And then also the start date. Start date is another thing that you could potentially negotiate. Depending on when they are interested in having you, if they've been without that position for a while, they might need someone to start right away and you might not be able to take a vacation right after graduation if you're looking for a full-time job. But thinking for something like an internship, maybe they don't need you to start one week into the amount. Or if you can come back to school a week early, things like that, if you have some training for an event that you're with on campus. So starting to think about, again, things that aren't salary, but could be important to you to say, oh, I really want to take some time off, where I know I'm going to be moving across the country, and it's going to take me two weeks to get there and find an apartment, get all my stuff there, tell me what I need to do. So that's something that I want to start a little bit later. So sometimes companies, the different departments, can negotiate things besides salary that are easier to do, such as a later start date, um, or maybe even moving costs. It's going to cost me $500 to move from one city to another city. Sometimes they can find $500 somewhere, but they can't always find you know, $1,000 per year to give you, or they can't get HR to approve that. So starting to think broader than just salary, what are some other things that could be incorporated towards that? Um, so again, typically when they offer you that salary offer, you could say, yep, that's exactly what I want, and they might have you log into a certain system and say, yes, this is what I accept. Or they might have you actually sign a contract to say, I'm committed to this organization. Um, but if you want to negotiate, then that's something that you would get that usually through email or you would be able to pick it up from the office depending on how close you are to them. If it's something you want to negotiate salary, then you would usually have to set up a meeting or call them and say, I, again, I'm really excited about this offer, but I'm interested in negotiating my salary. Is there an opportunity to do that? And they might say, sure. What are your salary expectations right now? Or what are you interested in? And during that time, that's when you would want to have that data ready to say, from my research on the NACE calculator, I saw that this is where an entry-level employee is starting. These are the specific skills that I have. And this is why I think I should be making more. And sometimes, even if it's a meeting that you have face-to-face, -face, that person isn't the only one that has a say if you get more money or not. Sometimes they have to go to their supervisor. Or sometimes they have to go to their human resources. And it might not happen right away. It might take two days, it might take three days, it might take a week. Because sometimes, whatever salary range you kind of gave them, they might not be able to meet that top salary, but they have to talk to some other people about what they can meet and kind of see if that fits your expectations. So they might come back to you a week later and say, okay, you, you know, asked for 39,000, we can offer you 37,5. But that might take a little while for them to get that to you. So be patient. Don't bother them, they're working on it. Um, you know, if it's something that they say, you know, we can't negotiate salary, then you would want to have a plan of, okay, is there anything else you can negotiate? I see that I get 10 vacation days to start out. Is there a way that I can get five more vacation days? Or is there a way that I can start a little bit later so I can get my personal effects in order? So have a plan when you go in, because again, some of them might be immediate no, but some of them might be, yep, we can work on it, but it's going to take us a little bit while. So just kind of knowing that, that it's not going to be maybe a one-time conversation. Mm -hmm. um, how is it received if you're, say, like, I'm very excited to work with you guys, but this other company is offering me a little mm -hmm. more? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So he said, I'm really excited to work with you guys, but this other company is offering me more. So one, never lie. Never say that you have an offer from somewhere else if you don't because that's going to look bad on you because there's a lot of industries that are really small that people know where people are interviewing, um, even if you're not telling a lot of people. So never lie. But if there legitimately is another company that you would be doing something very similar, that they're also after you, but you like that company more and the timeline aligns, you can say, I was interviewing at this other company. I'm more interested in your company. If you are, again, don't try to negotiate if you're not willing to accept that job but then say, this is what they're offering. Would you be able to match that or go above that? So you can definitely do that. You can use that to your advantage to say, somebody else wants me, and if you can't meet 
demands, I'm not going to say demand, because that's kind of hard to say, I must have this, because then they could say, okay, we can't meet that, good luck, and then you might be out two different jobs. So kind of think about that before you go, but you can definitely leverage if you have other job offers. So it's a really good idea to do that. Other questions you guys are thinking of right now? Cool. Um, so practice it. So you can actually practice salary negotiation with the career counselors like myself in our office. If you say, I have this offer coming in, I'm not really sure how to actually negotiate that. I want to practice with someone. I want some different tips even after a salary negotiation workshop. We can do that. Just kind of give you that ability just like we do the mock interviews to say that practice kind of helps you ease it a little bit more. Um, so again, it's not personal. You really want to be talking about your values towards the company and your goals, not something that is related to your personal experience. Um, so we talked about all this, you know, kind of your self-assessment, knowing yours, the market values of the industry, similar companies, and then cost of living data. So another thing, the woman in the back had asked about, well, what if I'm working for a small company? What if that's what I'm interested in? And maybe you can't find salary data on that company. Sometimes you can find salary data about a similar company. So that could be another great way to kind of say, I looked at your competitors. One, that's kind of nice to know that they know who their competitors are and you've done that research, but this is what they're offering or this is what I know about. So you can use that data as well. Um, so these are other things that we kind of had talked about, knowing your values, the ability to be involved in those things that it might not be about salary. So we talked about a lot of these. Um, another one is stock options. So some companies, that's something else that you can either get right away as part of your package or it's something that you can negotiate. Um, so especially if it's a company that you really believe in, that you know you're going to work hard for them, they might offer you stock companies in the company you're working for or maybe sister or brother or parent companies that they have. So that could be something that if you're more risky with your money, if you say, hey, I'm young, I've got a lot of time to invest in stocks before I need to retire, I want to have that option, that could be something else that you can negotiate too and ask for more stock options. Um, telecommuting. So that's something that if you know that you live a little bit farther away from work or that you know you might have a child to take care of and you say, is there ability to work you know, on site Monday through Friday, but, or Monday through Thursday, excuse me, but on Friday I get to work at home. And I'm going to be working, I'm going to be accessible via phone, computer, Skype, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be working, but it's easier for my personal effects that I have the ability to do that. So some companies will say, sure, you're absolutely allowed to do that. Maybe some Fridays, every other Friday, we're going to need you to come in for one meeting at 9 a.m. You can say, that's great, because then you still have every other Friday fully at home that you can work at home. So that's something that's becoming more and more popular. Um, tuition reimbursement. How many people think that they want to go to grad school sometime? Grad school, medical school, dental school, anything like that. Cool, so a lot of people. So that's something that different companies also might offer you the opportunity to pay for you to go back to school. So that would be something to ask them what maybe universities they're affiliated with, what programs that they know about, and see what their tuition reimbursement is. Because again, like a lot of these things you might say like, I'm not worried about going back to grad school for at least three years after I graduate. I spent enough time in school right now. But the best time to negotiate all those things is when you're accepting that job offer. Because if you go in down the line, they don't know that they have those intentions and they might not be able to find those resources later on. So these are all really good things to talk to them about in the beginning. Um, so the accelerated performance review. So let's say you go in and you say, I really want to be making this amount of salary. I looked at salary.com. This is what they're offering. They say a typical person in this city, in this type of organization makes. Can you give me that amount? And they say, we're really, really sorry. We really want you. We can't give you any more than we offer. We really hope that you accept anyway. One tactic is to say, OK, I'm really interested. Is there a way to talk about my salary six months in or a year in based on my performance? So we caution people to be careful about that because depending on what that organization has you do in six months or a year, you might not have had the opportunity to really demonstrate your value and you might go into that performance review saying, well, I've done all these things, but they might say, well, we knew that everyone else in your category was doing the same thing, so no, we're not going to give you any more money. 
Um, so that's something that if you feel confident about that, you can definitely do that, but it is kind of hard um, to negotiate that early on. Um, the business title, that's something else that you can negotiate. If you know that maybe you'll, your title is confusing to people outside of your organization and you're working with a lot of external people or you're coming in with experiences that maybe are higher than an entry level position, so you could start out a little bit higher, a different title could also be something that you could negotiate. So thinking about those things. Um, hours of work, bonuses, parking. Parking costs a lot in different cities. <laughs> thinking about, hey, it cost me $500 to park downtown in Cincinnati. Can you pay for my parking pass? And they might be like, yeah, we could cover that. So again, it's about being creative and thinking about what are some of those things that you might not initially think are related to salary negotiation, but they could cover um, and not think of. Other things, company car, a cell phone, computer, um, bonuses. So this is something that, does anyone know how people actually get determined their bonuses, like what the bonuses are determined off of? How much money it is? Has anyone heard that before? It's like a percentage of your salary based on performance. Yep, yeah, so exactly. So a lot of times your, sal your bonus is, you know, 1% of your salary. So thinking about that by negotiating salary earlier on, if you're making $35,000 and your colleague next to you is making $38,000, if you both have done really well that first year and they say everybody in the company is going to be getting a 2% bonus, if you're the one making $35,000, you're not making as much as your colleague that's probably doing the same type of work. So that's why it's also good to negotiate the salary earlier because those bonuses, you're going to be getting less than maybe other people around you that are doing the same thing. That's important to go. Um, Benefits, training, again, um, professional development, to ask, you know, I really love being a part of this professional organization in undergrad that's related to this major, this organization. Could you pay my $50 membership fees? Sure. Mm -hmm. You mentioned negotiating based on cost of living. Yeah. Some reliable websites you can send this to? Yeah, so they're at the end, and so they're all in there. So they actually, what will happen is you'll find a specific title that you're interested in. So it might say business analyst and then you can actually put in that city and then some of them have more specific for different companies but then you can actually see what is the entry level, the median, the upper level salary in that city but then also compared to the rest of the country. So it's pretty neat. It's, it's pretty cool once you start to investigate it and kind of get that data. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about relocation allowance for a second? Yeah. Um, so have you ever heard of that before? Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. So. Uh, have you heard that people get that, or what do you kind of know about relocation allowances? Um, not too much specifically. Um, yeah. I know that with some people that have been jobs in the past, they did. Mm -hmm. um, I know the process that they went through to do. Yeah, so relocation and al and allowances, if you know he had said that he's interested in relocating to the Carolinas, so that could be a little bit farther than, you know, Chicago or something. but. That could happen, again, you want to talk to them about that beforehand. Some companies might give you a lump sum and say, we can give you $200 towards your relocation allowance. That's something that we just cover $200. And they might write you a check for $200. Other companies might say, keep any receipt that's related to your relocation, whether it's a moving truck, whether it's that you had to rent a trailer, whether it's that you had to buy new furniture, Keep all of that, and then you're going to be able to turn in those receipts, and we'll determine how much money we can give you based on a certain percentage. Um, other ones that I've seen be successful, um, it's usually a, a lump sum, a certain amount, or you could tell them, I estimate that it's going to cost this much money. So if you've done research, you know, this is how much it's going to cost me to move. They can do that. Other companies simply move you um, for free. So some companies, if you know that Six months you have to go somewhere to train, and then after that six months, they farm people out to different locations throughout the country. They might say, we just pay for that. We have a moving company that we work with, and you don't worry about anything besides just telling them where to be and when, and you don't even pack your boxes. They just come in and start packing things up, get it on the moving truck, you even put your car on there, we fly you out and get you there. So there's different things, so it's good to talk to those companies to see what they've done potentially in the past or also kind of having that data of how much really would it probably cost me to get there? Because they might say, okay, great, how much do you want? And you don't want to say 
$200 if it's going to cost you closer to $800. So definitely try to estimate, but then give them a reasonable range, but something that's on your higher end so that you can get the information that you need. Other questions about things on this list that you just had not really heard of before or you're not you're really interested in negotiating? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's kind of a start date. Yeah. Uh, contingent on getting an offer, I have a three-week trip that's already booked in mm -hmm. in these next coming months. And yeah. I could potentially start before then. Yeah. And would I bring that up? Or yeah, so he said that he has had, he has a three-week trip planned, and depending on some of the companies he's looking at, they have a start date that could be before that trip. So you don't want to necessarily be out all that money, right, that you would spend, like, I planned this trip, airline tickets, whatnot. So that's still part of the salary negotiation. So ne salary negotiation encompasses all this. So I would talk to them then, again, once you have the offer to say, I'm really interested, I want to accept, I have this trip, is there any way I can start a week later? So that's the kind of the one, the start date is one of the ones that is a little bit more personal based. You don't necessarily need to be like, oh, I've got this trip with this, this, this. Just say, I have a personal commitment that I'm wondering if I can start a week later. Sometimes they can't start you a week later depending on what they need, if, especially if they're bringing in a lot of people. They might say that you need to participate in this training, it's mandatory training and there's no way we can catch you up. If they say, okay, you need to be at this training, maybe you can ask, is there any way I can conference call in? Is there any way that I can Skype in? You know, I can't be there in person, but is there any way I can do that? And they still might say no, and that would be something that you have to consider, you know, is this trip important to me? Is this job important to me? But I at least tried. Because until you ask, the answer is just gonna be, hey, this is what we have to offer you. So definitely trying those things and seeing what opportunities they can give you. Because again, if they're offering you that job, they want you. They want you to be happy in your position. They want you to stay there. And by giving you an additional week of vacation before you start, they might be like, that employee remembers that, and they're going to tell other people that we were accommodating to them. And that's something that we really feel is a value for our company that we want our employees to know about. So thinking about all those different things is important. Um, so learning about the flexibility. I talked about the investment banking and consulting industries are a little bit more strict. Um, consult with us. Talked about that. Um, so when I talked about before, the demands. So you never want to go in and say, I must make this much amount of money. Because if they can't give you that amount of money, that's when it could potentially lead more to, well, we can't offer you that. And because you said must, we're not really sure that we can work together to accommodate each other. But if you go in and have a polite <laughs> discussion about, these, this is the research that I've done. This is what I'm interested in doing. You know, they can go back, they can check all those things, but you never want to use must, have to, need, those things, because that could definitely turn people off. Think about conversations that you've had where it didn't seem like there was going to be a compromise between the two of you or between a group. You really want the salary negotiation or any other thing that you're negotiating to be a compromise, to be the best fit for what you want and what that employer wants. So that's something that, kind of remember that compromise. Um, so don't commit to anything until you're you know, ready to accept, so don't sign any papers, don't say, yep, I'm definitely ready for this. Um, and then a verbal acceptance. So we talk about this a lot in career services that you might say over the phone, yes, we've reached you know, an agreement, I agree on all these things that you've said, and I'm committed to starting this date, this salary, this title. Until you actually get something in writing, that's what you need. You really need that you know, via email, in writing, pick it up from the office, whatever they kind of say, because until that's in writing, they don't have on their files that you're officially an employee of their organization until you start. So that's something that you would want to get. Usually most companies are pretty good about that. They'll say, we're going to send this to you, or you need to come pick it up, or it's going to be delivered to you in the mail. Because um, a lot of times, you know, you don't want to move to North Carolina until they say, yeah, you definitely have a job with us. So most of the time, most companies do that relatively quickly, but that's something that you want to be committed to them, but I don't say pull out of other jobs until you actually have that paper in hand, because you never know what that company, what might happen. Mm -hmm. How do you politely ask for more time to consider if like, you're waiting to hear from another job? Yeah, so if they tell you you have 48 hours to reply back to us, you can let them know, like, kind of, hopefully sooner, like within that 48 hours, if you knew right then, like, 
oh, I have another company that told me they'd get back to me in a week, you can let them know, I have some other offers on the table, is there any way that I can have a week? And they might say, we can't do a week, we can do five days, we're trying to get everyone started. Accept kind of what they said, call that other company <laughs> that you're interested in and say, again, I have another offer on the table, if that other company is the one that you're more interested in, say, you know, I don't want to be out two jobs, I'm really interested in you, can you tell me what your timeline looks like? Can you tell me where I'm at in your candidate pool? And sometimes they can exp expedite things a little bit for you. So that's something that you can definitely talk to them about those opportunities. So that's a good question. Cool. Um, so when I talked about, you know, don't pull out of those other offers until you get that piece of paper. It's also good to do research on companies because if you see that a company has not been successful and has been laying people off a lot or there have been some sketchy things that have happened with certain companies, you know, they offer a position and then six months later those people don't have jobs anymore. Sometimes you can read about that in the news. Those are things to really know about and consider before you accept an offer. Um, so we talked about the budgeting. Um, so, yep, so we, if they can't meet your demands, if you know this is what I really need to live in this city, to pay you know, my personal expenses, to meet the needs of my family, this is what I really need and I can't negotiate anything else, you can say no. You can politely always call them within the amount of time that they said this is when we would like to know by. Let them know, you know, I really enjoy my interview process, but this just can't meet my expectations right now. You know, I hope to continue working with you in some capacity in the future. So make sure you let them know that you're not going to accept that opportunity. Um, and if you know sooner than later, let them know sooner. If they said, you have two weeks to accept this opportunity and you knew a week in that you accepted another job or that you had other intentions or you didn't like the position. You know, if you went in somewhere and then they offered you the job and you're like, I would never work there. I don't feel comfortable. I don't like it. I'm not going to go to your salary. You can tell them that. You don't, don't be mean. Don't say, I'm never working with you people. But just say, I feel like there's a, a better fit for me elsewhere. I really appreciate the offer. Just because you don't want to burn those bridges right away. You always want them to think that you're responsive, a good candidate, polite, all those things. Um, so I talked about never adding to that negotiation list down the line because a lot of people like to hear those things up front so they know how they can accommodate you. Um, so we talked about those moving expenses. Um, stay positive and use your manners, that discussion we talked about. So there comes a point when you know, you've said, I'm interested in tuition reimbursement. And they say, great, this is how much we can give you. We can give you 80% in the next five years. And you're like, perfect. I thought I only had three years to get it done, but your organization's giving me a little bit longer. That's great. So know when to stop. You know, don't just keep asking for things. Kind of have a priority list to say, first, I would want a little bit more salary. Then I would want tuition reimbursement. Then I would want moving expenses. Then I would want vacation. You don't necessarily need to ask for all those, <laughs> but knowing like some of those things are easier to get. Um, so don't upset them. You know, know when to stop. And don't be greedy. And then, again, accept the offer. Um, so that's why this here talks about making sure that everything that you had talked about, you get in writing. Because if you would talk to a human resources person, they said, sure, you can get two more days of vacation. If that's not listed anywhere, especially if it's different than what other employees at your level have the opportunity to do, you want to get that in writing just so they have that. And it's, it's completely appropriate. Um, this happened to one of my colleagues the other day. They had gotten a, a job offer and it was a different title than they were supposed to have, like completely different. It was a lower title than they were supposed to have, and that's not what they had interviewed for, that's not what you know, they had accepted. And they wrote back, and they said, I was actually you know, interviewing for this position, had it, wanted to accept this role. And the HR people were like, oh, yeah, absolutely, we're so sorry, we messed up. Like, tell them that earlier on so that they can fix that before you just go and sign things. So that's really important to read the fine print so you know what's going on. Um, and then, again, if there's confusion, confusion at the later date, then you have that written that you can always bring that to HR, or your supervisor, or whoever would be able to accommodate you. So kind of the thoughts. Um, so it's not mandatory. So again, thinking like not every job or internship that you apply for, you're going to go negotiate, but always, always consider it. Um, so avoid being the first to mention the salary figure. Again, what we talked about in the very beginning, that you don't want to undersell yourself 
but you also don't want to say, okay, they're offering something really different and I haven't done my research yet, so I'm just going to throw out a number. Um, really try to avoid throwing out a number without doing that research. If you do see on an HR application, it says, what is your range? Usually I tell people, if it doesn't have that little asterisk that says you have to fill this out, don't fill it out. You don't need to fill it out then. Um, or if it says in, you know, submit in your cover letter, what your salary range is, that's, you know, if it specifically says something like that, you want to do that research and say, from my data on the NACE calculator, based on this city, based on this job title, this is what I found at entry level. So my base would be this, this. So you can write that in there. Um, so know your jailbreakers, do that research. Um, and then these are, I'll be sending this PowerPoint out for all of you. So this first set of links is just different salary and information for different, 250 different occupations. Um, the quintessential careers one is more about the tactics of salary negotiations. So if you're just interested, like, well, how do I not say must? Or what are appropriate terms to use? Or how can I kind of start that conversation? That has a little bit more about that. Um, Jobstar has salary surveys. So again, kind of those lists that they're getting from different employers about how much money their entry level people are making, their mid-level people, their upper management are making. Um, Vault is really nice because it has different things related to the different geographical areas. So that's something I know a couple of you are looking for those different ways. All these, um, these are the ones that I typically recommend, salary, NACE, Glassdoor. Glassdoor is actually really interesting too, besides showing you salary, it also will show you reviews of companies. So it's pretty neat because you can actually see feedback from those employees about what they enjoy about the organization, what are some of the challenges about the organization. There's also a section on Glassdoor called interviews, and people actually write what interview questions they had been asked, what their interview was like, did they get the job offer, did they not get the job offer. So doing some of that research beforehand, again, can be really valuable for you that you know, well, if I go in and I anticipate that these are some of the questions that are going to be asked of me, that's going to be really helpful so I can be even more prepared and a little bit less nervous during that interview. So those are the best ones to go to. Then ONET, we put on here, just as some of you are, are maybe exploring like, hey, I have a certain major, maybe psychology. I could do 20 different jobs with my psychology major. There's not one thing I can do. Um, this ONET has a list of different job titles and then competencies for those areas and typical job tasks. So that's something that as you start to look at different job sites, what are some titles that are going to be appropriate for me? Sometimes the job descriptions might give you a paragraph about what you're going to be doing, that might not be enough for you to determine is that how I'm actually going to be using my skills to my advantage or what I want to be doing. So ONET can really help you with some of those things. Um, I put those consulting firms on there. They're not free, but they do have really good information. I always say go free first, right? Like you can find a lot of information that's free on the internet, but that's just another resource that some people really find them valuable that if you want to pay, those are the best ones. And then also if you're looking into things that are related to government, healthcare or state jobs, they also post them on government websites. Cool. So that's all. Thanks for coming.